Okay, here we're going to go over cannabis genetics, which as this kind of DNA puzzle shows, still a little bit of figuring out is going on in this uh, category in relation specifically to cannabis. So one of the reasons that is, is cannabis genetics have been hidden, like we see here. Uh, the tracking is poor at best, and due to the lack of applied molecular genetics, many of the names that are thought to be the same may actually be quite different from one another. And the tracking system uses based more word of mouth than actual science. And as we see here with our kind of like small grow tent operation, this can be a lot of the source of certain genetics or source of certain varieties. And sometimes there's poor labeling involved or people sharing material or people thinking they're sharing certain material. Uh, and as a result, those genetics or those actual lineages have kind of become a little bit hidden, kind of have an idea, but not really a true tracking system. So Phylos is a company that's committed to cannabis genetics, and they have them highlighted here. And they offer services, I'm going to mention these three in a little bit of detail, uh, plant sex test, genotype test, and the Phylos galaxy, which is really interesting. So let's first look at the plant sex test. This allows growers to cull out male plants from a set block of, of seeds very early. Typically, we have to grow our plants to very um, to lay flower and then be able to tell all male and female flowers, but this allows us to be culled out much earlier. Using DNA-based method, the presence of a Y chromosome can be identified early at the seedling stage. This will allow the elimination of the worthless plants. And as we can kind of see right here, here's our male. This is just flies. X and Y chromosome is a male. Females have two X chromosomes. Uh, this reduces the wasted time. We can cull up the males early and wasted time on resources and plants that will not produce any valuable yield. The cost is about $60 per four samples, which may be cost prohibitive in small operations, but if there's large operations where taking care of those plants can get very expensive. Uh, this is a great way to cull out males, especially if you're starting from a large block of seeds. And the genotype test, this allows growers to get a report of their plant's unique genetic makeup. It can be used to identify clone matches and how the plant material relates to other known cultivars. With this information, growers can provide the cultivars uh, can, sorry, prove the cultivars that they have and provide people with information that they have uh, background on what their actual genetics are. Uh, this can also help make a beneficial breeding decisions if you have a known set of genetics. The data collected also gets uploaded into the Galaxy, which I'm going to mention in a bit, uh, which is shared collection of genetics for a community database. Now this is $295 per sample especially for companies that may be shipping out clones. It would be great to uh, incorporate this, or if you're receiving clones from someone, maybe to request this as a way to know the actual genetic make makeup of the material that you're receiving. The Phylos Galaxy. So this contains many data points and may take a little time to load properly. So I put the link down here at the bottom, and I highly recommend you take a look at this. Just again, be patient. It may take a little while to load. It's a large data set. I suggest you simply type a name like OG Kush and see how many different samples that you can come up with. Select one and you'll see a report and it states close uh, genetic relatives, novelty score, population profile, genetic variation, and uh, genetically distant varieties. Uh, the relatives provides an idea of immediate and non-immediate relatives. The novelty score, how common or rare the genotype may be. Keep in mind this is genotype, the genetics, not phenotype. Population profile breaks down the estimated present of six distinct subgroups, such as skunk, berry, uh, landrace, OG, Kush, hemp, and CBD. The variation, the amount of hetero, the degree of heterozygosity, or how stable the cultivar may be. Lastly, uh, distant varieties provides an idea of what the most genetic different varieties, which may help indicate what make it interesting crosses in the future. So again, I highly recommend you take a look at this website. Yeah, give it some time to load, uh, but type in some varieties and you can see some of the variability and also some background information on this. Hopefully this is one step closer to starting to build a data set for cannabis genetics.